start introducing yourself and your background and tell us more about uh, Qatar Injaz. Uh, Imad Al Khaja, uh, CEO at Qatar Injaz. Fadal. Well, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, it is my so second time around uh, with you and Esqua. Uh, very happy to be here. So thank you very much for uh, having me. Um, so, as you mentioned, my name is Ahmad Al-Khaja, I'm the CEO of Injaz uh, Qatar. If I may just give a, a little brief about who we are and what we do. So, Injaz Qatar is a, an educational NGO, and we are a member of a global NGO called Junior Achievement, which is considered to be uh, uh, one of the largest educational NGOs in the world. We exist in 120 countries in the world. Um, the, the history of organization goes back to 1919, so it's over 100 years old. In Injaz Qatar, we run under the regional hub, which is called Injaz Al Arab, that consists of 13 countries across the MENA region. Qatar is one of them for the past 15 years. So, what do we do as uh, Injaz uh, Qatar or Junior Achievement? Um, we mainly uh, help develop youth uh, within three uh, or four main uh, pillars entrepreneurship, work readiness, and financial literacy. And now we added a new pillar to the mix, which is digital literacy and STEM education. Um, we really think that this kind of uh, soft skills or what we call 21st century skills are essential and are just as important as academic and hard skills for the students. And since we are here in an SME uh, summit, entrepreneurship is one of the main pillars. In fact, it's the main pillar that the whole organi organization started with. So the services that Qatar Injaz is providing is related to education. That's what I can... Related? Ed education uh, in different terms. Yes. As okay. you know, education is a very broad yes, spectrum. Yes, it is. So we focus on the soft skill part of education. So uh, from this point, what does education uh, has, like what effect does education has on the journey of uh, whatever SMEs, let's say, uh, a startup or an SME? What is the, the effect that the education have on them? If I may just uh, derive from our yes. own experience. Yes, based on your experience, of course. Yes. Like you've um, seen a lot of SMEs, I believe, okay? Yeah. And what makes, like when you look at an SME, you would say like this one, yeah, and you could tell the difference if this one has a good educational background or not, okay? Would that make a difference between one SME and another? Okay. When it comes to uh, entrepreneurial education, I do believe that Again, the methodology that we use at Injaz or Junior Achievement as a whole is a very practical, hands-on uh, methodology. It's not; it's far from uh, theory. Okay. We do believe at Injaz that uh, entrepreneurship is a skill that needs to be acquired practically. So, a lot of the programs that we have, we actually take the students through the whole life cycle of a business uh, in order for them to fully grasp and understand. Um, the different set of skills that would make an entrepreneur. As you know, entrepreneurship is a collection of a lot of skills. And um, in, a, in a previous uh, session today, I was talking about our experience with, uh, with how we are conveying these kind of sets of skills to the students through the educational, uh, educational system. And I have to say, it was, it's been quite a journey with our educational system in Qatar and how it evolved and how now uh, 21st century skills, including entrepreneurial skills, are seen very important skills and just as important as science and math and you know geography. Okay. So I'm very happy that we we've reached that high level of uh, you know of knowledge. So this part, based on your experience again and the program that Qatar and Jazz is like and just Qatar is providing, uh, when should this start? Like the educational cycle or uh, building the educational background for SMEs or entrepreneurs. When should that start? At what stage? One of, the, one of the issues that when we have sat down with the Ministry of Education and different stakeholders in, uh, in the country, uh, including our main uh, entrepreneurial hub, uh, which is Qatar Development Bank. Okay. I call them the godfather of entrepreneurship in, in, in Qatar. Qatar. Okay. Yes, so we sat down to analyze a lot of the aspects of what are the gaps exactly in our uh, SME sector or startup sector in, uh, in Qatar. Um, definitely, as I mentioned before, um, Qatar scores really high when it comes to different parameters of SME. So Qatar ranks, I, I believe, fourth worldwide when it comes to SME financing. But we fall a bit shorter on other aspects, uh, especially when it comes to mindset and, and, and cultural aspect of 
you know, uh, entrepreneurship and uh, startups. So this is the aspect that we've kind of uh, focused on and no better way to, uh, the, the educational education is the gateway to uh, cultural change. So we went through that path and we focused on our education in Qatar through the Ministry of Education. So you started early. We start should, very early. You believe exactly. that like, building a, the knowledge of entrepreneurship in general should start like early. It should start very early on in stage. And it's it not, doesn't like it's not limited to people who wants to go to entrepreneurship track. No. Okay, after not at you all. graduated, like yeah, from not college. At all. It's, because I do believe that entrepreneurship, again, as a, as a set of skills, um, it helps a lot of these young students uh, throughout their life on a personal level, on a career level as well. So it's seen as entrepreneurship slash uh, intrapreneurship. It helps a lot, of, and I've seen and I've witnessed a lot of success stories with these students of how these programs help them even not just to become entrepreneurs, but help them in different ways in their lives. Yes, um, they can take short, uh, to, like short trips to everything. They have, they have the knowledge and they yeah. can apply it on, uh, on ground. It helps them a lot to overcome a lot of ob obstacles that might come throughout the way, knowing exactly. this before, you know, like on early, in early exactly. stages. Exactly, and yeah. because uh, I talked about cultural and mindset change, so it's a process, and process entails... Needs time. It needs time, exactly. Okay. So we have to start as early as, as grade yeah. one in school, yes. and this is where we are at. We're actually teaching grade one students. So this is what's happening in Qatar? This is what's happening now. Since when? I'm very happy to announce that. We've been doing this for quite some time, many years, but I'm very happy to announce that We've recently, actually exactly a m couple of months ago, we signed an agreement with the Ministry of Education in Qatar where it, where it applies all of these uh, programs embed embedded within the school's curriculums to ensure every single student in Qatar goes through that learning journey. So let's say in the, in the coming year, new student year, it's, everything will be like... It's actually now it's running? as we, as we okay, speak. It's running, it's running okay. now as we speak. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, this is our first academic year, 23-24, uh, okay. where this is uh, being done across nationwide, across all the schools in Qatar. All, all schools, like all public schools. and private schools? Well, we're focusing more on, on public, public schools, okay. Okay. but that, that's something else I wanted to talk okay. about. The next phase is private schools. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the programs that Injaz Qatar is holding are only for Qatar, or are you thinking of doing something regional? Well, and just Qatar focuses on, obviously, uh, Qatar as a market, but then our uh, sister organizations in other countries, countries okay, they, they have, they arms have in their it. own. Okay. Yeah, but it's interesting because we get to meet and connect regularly and share best practices and discuss, you know, current situations and programs, etc. And I realized that each country has a d totally different profile, set of challenges, set Definitely. of opportunities. Of course. And this is how we learn from each other. Okay. Of course. Uh, Imad, sorry. Uh, what would you tell, or let's more of like, what are, um, I'm, I'm going to ask this question. What are the future projects for uh, Anjaz Qatar, okay, uh, related to enhancing the capacity or the knowledge background for SMEs in the Arab region or Qatar? Uh, and what would be, or uh, what is the, based on your, uh, on your experience, uh, what is the most, like, what is, yeah, the most skill that is needed by, by SMEs as, as, as your experience? You know, what, what did you see that, yeah, it is needed now, they have to, and they are missing it at this moment? It differs, I guess, by any long time, but yeah, at sure. this moment. Um. First part of your question, uh, future plans, definitely, as I mentioned a minute earlier, um, we want to ensure all students go through this learning journey. Uh, and as NGO, of course, it's free of charge for everyone. Okay. So we do want to focus on private schools, and then next step is uh, pr public schools, and the next step is uh, private schools, which is actually even a bigger student population in Qatar. Yes. We have around 100,000 students in public schools and 200,000 students in private schools. Ooh. Yes, and I'm okay. talking about grade one to 12. Okay. So this is definitely uh, in the making right now, and um, there are a lot of plans, honestly. Uh, we can't do this uh, on our own, so definitely okay. there are a lot of new collaborations with, uh, with the corporate sector. And this is one of our mandates as well, is to kind of bridge that gap between the private sector, corporate sector, and the educational system through different uh, methods and platforms. These were curriculums you able, is one of them. Yeah were, you, yeah, were you able to connect with anyone here? in order to uh, 
yes. to reach this like goal? Uh, there was a very interesting, um, just like an hour ago, okay. I met this lady who was present, uh, presenting yesterday. Um, she has her own NGO uh, okay. uh, targeting uh, disabled uh, youth uh, in Jordan. Okay. And she, I think she moderated a session yesterday uh, okay. as well. All so right. we had a very interesting talk. And uh, this, this is kind of something that we always thought of, but we never actually took the first step. And to actually also target uh, individuals with cognitive with, uh, disabilities, yes, disabilities, this okay. is definitely something we want to focus on. And she actually uh, gave me a lot of ideas. Definitely, we're going to keep in touch after this. Yeah, uh, I'm happy that the platform, the summit platform, is like helping and connecting. Amazing, yeah, yes. amazingly so, yeah. Uh, all right, the second part of it, Remind the, me. Yeah, <laughs> the skills that SMEs are missing, the most like, skills, like you guys are working on education. Yes. So what do you think is like mostly missing? I think... In terms of like I, management, operation, communication, yeah. uh, business development, whatsoever. The program that we, that we have across all grades uh, cover a lot of aspects of entrepreneurship. And again, in a practical way, the methodology is very practical. So when it comes to problem solving, critical thinking, teamwork, uh, ideation, design thinking, all of that supply chain management, the whole life cycle of a business is amazing. But then the advice I would give is something that I've gone through personally, which has nothing to do with sitting in a classroom, okay. because this is not how you learn how to become an entrepreneur. You have to yeah, yes. work it by your hand on you the ground. You have to get your hand dirty. You have to dive deep. You have to do it yourself, not by sitting in a classroom. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to discredit what we're doing or discount what we're doing. Okay. This is a very important part of what we're doing. And in fact, it sparks a lot of interest in these young ones to start and try it, try it out. But that's the way. Try it out. Yes. You have to start. You have to start. You have yes. to fail and, and get up. You have to fail and get up. And, and, and we've met a lot of inspiring people here that actually talked about their experiences um, and how they failed and got up. And I think this is the main way. The one thing I always tell people, and this is something from my own personal experience, is that not just for uh, entrepreneurship, any kind of sector or, or something that you want to aspire to be, always surround yourself with the right kind of network. Always put yourself in these kind of environments and situations because this is how you get inspired, this is how you get ideas, this is how you get help and support. I know a lot of people that they've been doing it on their own but without being part of, of, of the right network or environment and they miss a lot of opportunities by missing that. They lose, they, of course. They, they, it's, a, it's a huge load. It's a so huge load. Yeah. So once they put themselves in the right network and environment, they're going to discover a lot of things that they had no idea about. So the exactly. first thing I tell people it's shortcuts, actually. It's shortcuts. So yeah, we're networking in a good way, literally shortcuts. Exactly. Every ecosystem has something to offer. Okay. So you have to put yourself in that environment, in that situation. Okay. And also, um, you know, as human beings, we we grow and learn. And I think that by challenging ourselves and take you know a leap of faith, this is how you discover new layers of yourself as yes, well. And this is a very big yeah, part. A self-discovery journey. journey. This is what an entrepreneur is. Yes. Entrepreneurship is a self-discovery journey. Yes. This is what it is. Yes. So I would always encourage people to be open to discovering new aspects and new layers of yourself. So this is the one, uh, the, the first advice that I would, would give uh, everyone. So Imad, how can people use or get benefit of your services? Do they apply or you approach them? I how? think um, it's safe to say that most Arab countries have an Injaz office there. Okay. Try to reach out and see, um, because each, each of these countries have an amazing unit. network okay. of supporters, whether from the corporate sector, from the government sector, individuals. I know that a lot of countries have built their own network when it comes to angel investors as well. So uh, in Qatar, for example, we have amazing collaborations with Qatar Development Bank, for example, with, with most incubators in Qatar. So we know exactly how to connect people based on their needs. Um, I do advise everyone to connect with the uh, Injaz office in their respective countries and uh, see exactly what kind of programs they offer that would fit their needs. Well, Aymad, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you so you much for, for your me. insight. Uh, looking forward to you having, like, enjoying the summit. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right.